Hello and welcome back to the How to Make Any Game Mechanic series. This is a series where you guys leave comments of what game mechanics you want to see and I create them. This is the third episode and we are doing a respawn. Uh, kind of just doing some of the basic stuff these first few episodes. Keep in mind these are all still buffered, so I made these well ahead of time. Anyways, let's get into it. So, in our hierarchy, right click, create. I'm going to make a square and name it to player. Next, I'm going to duplicate our player. I'm then going to scale it, move it, and call it ground. Today we're going to be doing respawning, so we should probably have some sort of a gap. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, move it over, and that's about it. I can go and fall to my death. For the player, we're going to borrow a component from episode one, which will just allow our player to move. It is the player controller. I'm going to use transform movement and set our move speed to three. Okay, perfect. Next, let's add in a box collider and rigid body 2D. Our ground also needs a box collider, so let's do that quickly. And let's hit play and make sure we can move around. Our player falls, and I can indeed move left to right and fall off of the world. Perfect. So what we're going to want to do is when we fall down off of this platform, we're going to want the player to respawn. There are a few different ways we could do this, but I think for this video, we're just going to talk about two different ways. So. Let's go ahead and right click, create a new C sharp script, and let's call it respawner. Next, we're going to select our player, scroll down and add the script to the player. Now let's open this up in VS code. Okay, now that we're in VS code, let's start with the easiest way that I know of to respawn the player. What we're going to want to do is add a using statement at the top of the script. And we're gonna be using scene management. So using Unity Engine dot scene management. And this will give us access to a few different functions, one of which will be extremely important. Let's come down here and make a variable and go serialize field private int current scene. Then we can come down to start and say current scene, scene manager dot get active scene dot build index. This is a tricky little line of code that we'll explain once we get back into Unity. Now we're going to come down below update and say on trigger enter 2D and I just auto filled that space this because that's how I like it and we are going to say if other dot game object dot tag equals I don't know let's call it respawn then scene manager dot load scene and in the brackets we're going to put current scene let's save that up and let me explain what this line does. So scene manager dot get active scene dot build index. When we go back into Unity, we're going to come up here to file, build settings, and we're going to add our current scene. You can see right here, you can just remove this. You can see that it has a number zero right here. This is the build index. And when we add new scenes in, it'll be referencing this number here. In order to make sure that you can respawn, you have to make sure that you add the scene into this build settings. So let's exit out of this, right click and create an empty. And let's call this respawner. Now I'm going to right click on the transform and reset it 
because for whatever reason the position values were a little bit messed up. And then we're going to come up to our tag and add a tag. And let's call it respawn. Next, we're going to select our respawner and select the respawn tag. Now, let's create a box collider 2D, select is trigger, and scale this up. Next, I'm going to place it below my platform. And when we hit play, our character falls. I can move off the edge and I respawn. Perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. And I can die a million times and everything's going to work perfectly. Awesome. Let's check out another way to respawn without resetting the entire scene. So let's go back into our script, open that up. And I'm going to create a bool. So serialize field, private bool, and let's call this scene respawn. And this is just so we can check it off in the inspector. And down here, I'm just going to say, and scene respawn equals true. Okay, so now we won't be respawning using the scene. So let's create another serialized field. And let's call it private int respawn point. So we can have different respawn points throughout the level. And when we die, we'll just respawn there. And the next thing we're going to need is another serialized field, private transform. And we're going to use two square brackets. And let's call this respawn points. Okay, I'm just going to separate these. And we will set these in the inspector. Now, on trigger intro 2D, we're going to basically just copy the first one. If other dot object dot tag equals respawn and scene respawn is false, so we're not using this type of respawn. We are then going to change the player's position. So game object dot transform dot position equals respawn point respawn point dot position. Let's save this up and go back into Unity. Back in Unity, let's right click, create an empty, and let's call this respawn point. All we're going to do is just move this point somewhere over here. Then on our player, we can scroll down, respawn points, and then drag and drop this respawn point into the respawn points. Alternatively, you could have hit the plus and dragged it in there. Now, when we hit play, we fall, fall off the edge, and I spawn over here. So what exactly happened? Well, for our player, he now knows that his respawn point is point zero. And you can see that this is element zero. Now, if we were to duplicate this respawn point and move it, I don't know, let's say up here, and then click our player, scroll down and add this new respawn point as well, and then change respawn point to one. And we hit play, falls, and he should spawn over here. And he does. And now he's just endlessly looping through. Let's change this respawn point back to zero. And you can see he teleports over here. It's a pretty cool effect. All you would need to do is keep track of which respawn point you want the player to spawn at. You can do this the same way we're respawning him with a trigger like this and just have them scattered throughout your level and change that one value. But that's just about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and hopefully you guys are really enjoying this series. I am quite behind and I haven't posted any videos at the time of recording. 
So if you have suggested something, I haven't seen it yet. Don't worry, I'm only going to do maybe one or two more episodes before I start releasing these onto YouTube so I can get some feedback from you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and maybe even learned something. And like always, I'll see you guys next week.